This was a really good game for both Chargers and Browns fans that let you know that your team will be in very good shape for the foreseeable future with your quarterback. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And this game was crazy. It was crazy. Um, and we always say how football is a game of inches. This game showed you exactly that. Now, of course, Chargers kicker, he missed not one but two extra points. And for some reason today, the, the kicking was just all off with so many people. Um, but he missed two extra points. So that's two points that he left on the board. Come the end of the game. Uh, the Chargers, they were moving downfield, and it was looking like they were going to set him up for a game-winning field goal. But, and I know there were some people like, oh, man, why didn't Austin Eckler, why didn't he just kneel the ball? Well, as a running back, as an offense, they were trying to control the clock. And they did have control of the clock, but they were really trying to drain that clock all the way down to where Browns had absolutely no time. So, Austin, what did Austin Eckler do? He was dancing in the backfield a little bit, dancing, dancing, and Browns were like, hold up. They made one of the smartest football plays I have ever seen. Because I don't, maybe I haven't been watching football too long, but I don't think I've ever seen a team. I've seen a team where they allow the, the, the running back or they, they allow the offense to score a touchdown where they just won't tackle them or whatnot. But I've never seen a team, a defense, actually carry a player into the end zone. Like they literally brought Austin Eckler to the end zone. They brought him in there. I know some people well, who got fantasy, who got Austin Eckler on their fantasy team. They were like, yes, friends, let's go. But they literally carried him there. And I was like, oh, but that, that was but, but that was so smart because if they would have let Chargers just run the clock out, they would have hardly had any time to move the ball downfield and get a touchdown. Because a field goal is one thing, but they had to get a touchdown. So then the, uh, the Chargers, they, of course, went for two. Didn't work out. Um, but because I thought live, it looked like he got it. But then they showed the replay and his knee was down. I was like, oh, okay. Now, at the end of the game, so for the Browns, and I know it's tough because it was the very last drive of the game, but the, their last two drives of the game had me like, I was, it was a little bit questionable for me. I understood kind of playing and say, like on, on the, the second to last drive, where it was third and 10. It was third and 10, and the Browns, they did a draw play to Kareem Hunt, I believe. And I was, felt like, and they were on their own, I think, 20-yard line. But still, I felt like, all right, this is toward the end of the game. You really trying to, you trying to win. If, say, for instance, worst case scenario, I felt like what you should have done there is you call a throwing play. If you don't see anything, have a little check down to try to just get a couple yards or whatnot so you don't have to throw it out of bounds, whatever. But uh, the run play there, I just, I didn't agree with it. I felt like they should have at least tried to get the first down. I felt like they should have tried this so they could really try to put the game, but it, they didn't. So anyway, um, and then at, on their last drive of the game, with no timeouts, it makes everything that much harder. So we got to keep that into perspective. But I know they, they took a shot. They, they took a shot on, oh, what was it, third, second or third down? I think it was third down. They took a shot um, down, the, uh, the side, down, down the left sideline. Incomplete. Uh, so then they took another shot on fourth down. It was fourth and 10. And I, like you could have tried to get the first down, but at the same time, maybe they would think, you know what, that clock might run out. I got to go for it all. Now, I don't know what happened on that last play of the game because I saw two Browns on the ground. I saw a couple of Chargers on the ground. I don't know what happened. It, it, no clue. And I didn't look at the replay yet, so I, I'm not sure what went down because I was thinking, uh oh, I, I see all these Browns on the ground. Am I going to see a yellow flag too? I just wasn't sure. But either way, uh, shout out to the Chargers. Justin Herbert, I feel like every time I watch this dude play, I feel like I say the same thing every time. Justin Herbert is cold, man. He is cold. And then he, and he, he coming in hot like this and he got to play my Ravens next week? <laughs> We're going to talk about that later, though. But anyway, that boy is cold, man. This was a nice little Mike Williams coming out party because we know he had been a little quiet this season so far. But Mike Williams was like, look, man. Tired of this dude, Justin Herbert. He keep throwing all these touchdowns. I need to get me some of them today. Today. And he certainly did that, man. Um, I love, probably my favorite play of this game. Came on the Chargers. I think it was their last, yeah, their last drive. Last drive. Where it was first and 10. It was right before the two-minute warning. 
And was it, yeah, I think it was right before the two minute warning. But they Justin Herbert set. It looked like he was gonna hand it off just so they could get a couple yards, or whatever. But he hit Jared Cook. A little short pass. It might have went for like three, four yards to Jared Cook. But it's like nobody saw it coming. And Jared Cook sprints down the sideline, man, and gets all those yards to make that drive so much easier uh, for the Chargers. That was my favorite play of the game. Because it was just so simple. It was smart. And it was effective. And I was like, well, who, who is Chargers offensive coordinator? Because he deserves a raise just for that play alone. Just for that. Um, but, yeah, that, that dude is cold, man. Char and Chargers, the way that they feeling right now, they just went and took it to the Chiefs. They took it to the – like, Chargers right now, they just beat the Raiders. They feeling on top of the world like we could mess with anybody. Now, don't take that confidence in the next week when you play my Ravens. But after that, hey, do what you want to do. But this game, it I think this game just confirms that both of these teams will be in the playoffs. I, and I know it's, it's still early in the season, but I think, think both of these teams will be in the playoffs. Because th they can score. They can score. And with the Browns in this game with Baker Mayfield, him and Odell Beckham, the, the talk of Baker Mayfield and o Odell Beckham this week been about their chemistry, how they've been playing like Call of Duty together and stuff. They've been working out together and all that, all that good stuff. They've been continuing to build on their chemistry and build on their rapport, which is great. That's what you should do. You want your quarterback and your receiver to have a great relationship. Because if they don't, if they don't have a great relationship off the field, then, yeah, it, it can show up on the field. But anyway, there's been all that talk about that. Now, the, the Chargers, they pretty much took Odell Beckham Jr. out this game. So what happened? Boy, David Njoku stepped up. He said, oh, there was all that talk about, yeah, I, I wanted to get traded before, but nah, I, I shut all that down. Yeah, there was rumors about me being traded before, but ah, that's in the past. And, you know, let me really show Browns fans why they need to drop all that trade talk for me. Hello, I'm here. Here goes first round draft pick, David Njoku. This is me. I'm showing up. So he showed up in a major way uh, in this game, and he made a huge impact. Then, of course, their bread and butter, you know, Kevin Stefanski's scheme. He loves to play action in this game. How do you set up a good play action though? What what do you do to set up a to make sure your play action works effectively? You got to have a great ground game. Nick Chubb had like what 150, 160 rushing yards and a touchdown, and then Kareem Hunt he didn't have a bunch of rushing yards. He had a high average, but he had the two touchdowns. So again, one of the best, if not the best, one-two punch at running back in the league because you have you have two starters. You have two starters. Um, so they. Bottom line, Browns, they showed a way to be diverse with their offense. We know they could do this, but they showed it. Um, and even without Odell Beckham Jr. going off and still not having Jarvis Landry because he's on injured reserve, they still put up them points. And that's something to think about, to, to, to think about potentially how dangerous they could be if it's a game where Baker and Odell are clicking, if it's a game where Jarvis Landry comes back. It's just something to think about. And then the Chargers, again, they, they've been doing this. They've been putting up all these crazy points. It's like with Justin Herbert, he don't throw for less than three touchdowns. in the, If he throws for less than three touchdowns in a game, something's off. Something just doesn't feel right. But these, these are two, two tough AFC opponents. And it's going to be um, some very stressful Games and, and thoughts going through my mind when my Ravens have to play these teams. And again, my Ravens have to play these Chargers next week. And then toward the end of the season, they got to play, play the Browns twice in three weeks. So, and, and in between those games, the Browns have a bye. And in between both Browns games, the Ravens have the Steelers, I believe. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Chargers fans, congrats. Because that game was... Again, that game was Looney Tunes. Browns fans, congrats too because this. Even though they took the the loss, which obviously sucks, uh, you know that you in good shape with Baker Mayfield and company and just everybody, and especially when they all get back healthy again. So appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank you all for watching. We out.